It's fair to say that the media have claimed on many occasions over the past 12 to 24 months that Tesla's autopilot makes drivers distracted and could cause accidents. What is not fair to say is the media hasn't said the same thing at all about GM Super Cruise. But a recent report claims that Super Cruise is actually worse for distracted drivers than Tesla's autopilot. I think this is more evidence of an interesting phenomenon. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Biking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thanks for tuning in. Let's have a look at what's actually going on in this report, which claims that Super Cruise drivers are more likely to drive distracted than drivers in Tesla vehicles using autopilot. Now, I'm sure you've heard there's been hundreds and hundreds of news reports over the past two years, in particular over the past 12 months, focusing on the problems of Tesla's autopilot, that it's making drivers, you know, go to sleep in their cars and drive distracted and causing all kinds of disastrous accidents, etc., etc. The media loves these stories. I haven't found one single story saying the same thing or anything close to it about General Motors Super Cruise, which is a very similar feature. Now, GM Super Cruise drivers are the most likely to engage in distracted driving behaviors while using partial automated driving software when compared to Tesla Autopilot, according to a new study by IIHS. The study was based on a survey of drivers who were asked to self-report on which driving activities they had performed and felt safe performing while using partially automated driving software. All three groups reported a higher likelihood to engage in distracted driving tasks while partial automation systems were turned on. However, other drive assist systems were not covered in this survey. So we don't know how other systems went, but we do know what the results were for GM and Tesla. The report said Super Cruise drivers were most likely to dis drive distracted on average. However, Tesla Autopilot users were more likely to engage in some tasks than Super Cruise drivers were. Super Cruise drivers were the most likely to say they were comfortable treating their systems as self-driving. 53% compared to 42% for Tesla's Autopilot and for Nissan's Pro Pilot, their version, only 12% said they were comfortable using the system as an autopilot system, essentially. The study asked many of a number of questions, including comparisons of whether drivers thought certain activities were safe to do with the system on or off, whether drivers thought they were better at certain activities with the systems turned on, etc. And it looks as though people who drive General Motors vehicles with Super Cruise, they love to eat while they're driving. 56% said that they eat while they're driving. 35% said that they drink while they're driving. 39% for Tesla's autopilot. And... Incredibly, 45% of GM Super Cruise drivers say they text while they're driving. For Tesla Autopilot, it was 34%. Those numbers are still a bit higher than what I would have expected. But maybe that also depends on how you can actually use your vehicle to send a text. That's a different story altogether. Now, as you can see from this chart, there's a whole lot of different things that people do while they're driving. There's a whole lot of survey questions. It's kind of hard to draw a direct conclusion to say GM is worse than Tesla or Tesla is worse than GM because there's so many different responses here. But I think ultimately the one thing that I took away from this is that realistically, IIHS is saying GM's drivers are more distracted than Tesla's. Personally, I don't really care what the difference is there. What I care about is how the media is falsely representing this story. They're saying Tesla drivers are the ones who are presenting all these dangers when clearly the issue is not so much Tesla, it's in fact everyone. Now, the report said that most drivers had experienced attention reminders, warnings by the system to pay more attention to the road or return their hands to the steering wheel. That's what both cars will actually do now. Now, some considered these reminders an annoyance, most considered them helpful, and said they increased safety of the system. IIHS says this broad consumer acceptance of reminders suggests that distraction reminder systems could be added to more cars without partial automation as distracted driving is a safety issue regardless of vehicle technology. And that's another issue, right, that the media doesn't focus on. The media doesn't care. The media couldn't care less if drivers are driving distracted. They only care, right, 
if it's a Tesla and they drove distracted. So I think we need to focus on this issue as a whole. Are drivers driving distracted? How, what can we do to prevent that, right? That in my view is if the media actually cared about a good outcome is what they would be focusing on, not about these sensational stories. Most drivers had also experienced unexpected behavior by the system. So that included drivers of Nissan, Nissan's version of autopilot, GM Super Cruise and Tesla's autopilot that required driver intervention. Now, apparently drivers of Nissan's and Tesla's are more likely to have their hands on the wheel when these interventions were needed and Super Cruise drivers were less likely to have their hands on the wheel as Super Cruise is marketed as a hands-free system, but the others require occasional steering input. This is interesting. I mean, is it really true that GM Super Cruise is safer than Tesla's autopilot if people are driving right, their GM vehicles with Super Cruise on without their hands on the vehicle and they're having to make interventions. That's quite a dangerous situation to be in, right? Having your hands doing something else, you need to make an intervention, which clearly has happened. That's what they're saying. Users are saying they've had to make an intervention. Then they're having to take their hands away and put them onto the steering wheel and make an intervention. That's going to take you a lot longer to actually try to prevent a crash. So in theory, really, that's actually a significantly more dangerous situation. Now, clearly, I think this exposes what the media has been doing, sensationalizing people who are driving Teslas, making it sound like they're dangerous, ticking time bombs are going to kill children at any moment. I'm sure you've heard the news. I'm sure you've seen the videos. And it's crazy. The thing is, YouTube is even censoring some of some videos proving that this is incorrect, that this, in fact, is wrong. And I, I think that this targeting is one of the things that proves my point. If you spend enough marketing dollars, then the media will be nicer to you. If you're General Motors, the media will be nicer to you because they rely on you for marketing dollars. Clearly, there's a correlation there. You have to admit that there's something going on, right? Now, the truth here is that Tesla and General Motors are not the only two companies who have these kinds of systems. In fact, almost every automotive company in the world has a similar system. That's my key point, right? Mercedes, they have theirs. BMW, they have one as well. Audi, every brand has a system, right? That is very similar to these kinds of systems. But when those vehicles are involved in crashes, whether it's fatalities or significant injuries, or just even a crash, the Mini doesn't even report it. They don't even report the fact that Many of the time when those vehicles were involved in crashes, they were using their own semi-autonomous, semi-driver assist systems. And clearly this shows the media are much more interested in you just clicking. And if it's Tesla, people seem to click. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.